Justin, you're very welcome to Talk Breakfast. How are you? Peter. And what do you make of the uh, this proposal by your former department, the Department of Work and Pensions, which the Daily Telegraph actually says wouldn't even be implemented until 2025 anyway? Would it get a grip on the problem? Well, it, it's a welcome opportunity. And because you are talking about some of the most vulnerable people in society, it is right that this is done cautiously. It is right that we work hand in hand with the disability and health charities who've got some wonderful uh, policy teams and you work with employers because one of the misconceptions uh, in this area is actually there are over 300,000 people a year of working age who drop out of work because of a long-term health condition or disability. The majority of people who have those conditions will get it during their working age. So we need to improve uh, the support uh, for when people enter the system, but crucially we also need to keep people in work as their health conditions change. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder how much the change in the nature of work, even actually since you started in the job in 2019, obviously we've seen working from home has become a huge change. There is a sense for a lot of people, there are a lot of people in work or heading to work this morning, maybe listening to this on the radio, who are you know paying all their taxes, doing everything they have been told to do. Public services just aren't where they should be in this country. That's a whole other debate, but we can maybe talk about that in a second in regard to, to rack and the concrete problems. But in terms of there are so many people doing the right thing, doing what they are told to do, and then there are people who are abusing the system. Are you confident the government can actually sort this out? Because it is very, very galling for a lot of people. There are many people who are perfectly, legitimately disabled and should be received. We should help them. Absolutely no problem with that. But in terms of the fact that there are people abusing the system, how can this help? How can this new idea help uh, weed those people out? Well, actually, I first became Disability Minister in 2015 under David Cameron, so I've seen a huge amount of change. And look, if you can get this right, it's good for the individual. It allows them to unlock their potential, have the security of their own career. It's good for employers who've got skills gaps. And of course, it's good for the taxpayer if somebody is in work paying tax rather than on benefits. So it's a triple win, and you don't often get that in politics. And we have made huge uh, strides, 2 million more disabled people in work since 2013, record highs. And as I said, we currently lose around 300,000 people a year from the workplace. And with better advice, better support for employers, we can stem that, uh, those people dropping out of the workplace. And it's far easier to keep somebody in work than to try and rebuild their confidence to get them back into work, going through what are often very expensive uh, work programs to rebuild their confidence or skill sets. And COVID turbocharged uh, more flexible working, the use of technology. Uh, we're using technology now to do this interview. This is commonplace now in day-to-day -day working life and that's created more opportunities to either keep people in work or help people who had previously been written off. And look, during my time as uh, Minister for Disabled People, I did many, many visits. And whenever I spoke to particularly young disabled people and I said, if you had my role, what's the one thing you would want to do? And they would say, I want to have the same opportunities my friend, my career opportunities that they take for granted. And any, you know, this was last reviewed in 2011. The world has moved on so much since then. This is a real opportunity. OK. Um, Justin, it's a year today since Liz Truss became Prime Minister. Quasi Quarteng, her Chancellor, who uh, drove the economy off a cliff with his disastrous mini-budget, was questioned by my colleague Piers Morgan last night. He finally said sorry. Let's just see a clip of that. What I want to say is that I think the strategy was right. I'm sorry for the implementation. Are you that, sorry for the damage caused to the British I'm people? sorry for the implementation and it was it was too far too and for fast. the damage caused to the british people. i don't know why you look there were lots because of, they lots suffered of, financial you know, lots loss of people were lots of people were but no but I, you were the chancellor okay i was the chancellor of the exchequer are I'm you sorry, sorry for, for the, the financial damage it caused to the british i'm people. sorry for the uh damage and uh, the loss and uh and it was a scary time and i'm sorry for that quasi we got there okay and so, I've, so, I've not tried to drag that out of you. No, no. I, look, I've not tried to humiliate we've you. We've had a good conversation. Yes. And, I've and I thought think about, you've come to it. I've thought about what you were saying. Yes. And I've, I thought, actually, you know, we've got to put your hand up. I've accepted responsibility a long time ago. And you've said, well, why don't you get the, do the mm. step forward, uh, take a step further and apologise? And I've said, you know, that's fair enough. And Justin Tomlinson, you're a Conservative MP. Who do you blame for the shambles of Liz Truss's administration? Well, she was the Prime Minister. You have to show humility. You have to own your decisions. You earn the right to represent people, good and bad. And that's the democracy that we live in. Was Kwasi Kwarteng right to finally apologise for what... Uh, no, for I think he should. I, 
it was a good interview. I think he showed good humility. Ultimately, and rightly so, he is no longer Chancellor. Um, that was a good interview. OK, uh, you're a backbencher, not in government at the moment. Uh, but of course, gov successive governments have had serious problems and ignored the problem of the concrete problem in our schools, uh, some hospitals and courts as well. Obviously, uh, your constituents, I would imagine, in uh, Swindon will be dealing with this as well. Uh, has the government got a grip on this? Have they done too little too late? I mean, surely they should have seen this coming. Well, look, we've spent £28 billion on improving our schools uh, up and down the country since 2010, £15 billion pounds since 2015. A load of my constituency is full of brand new schools built in advance of the demand, a stark contrast to when I was a councillor under a Labour government, when we would have big waiting lists and a lack of local schools. I've seen huge amounts of improvements. It is very clear the government is taking this issue seriously. It's working with local authorities. It's working with the different schools trusts to identify, thankfully, the relatively small number of schools that could be impacted on these building materials first used since the 1950s. It's a serious issue. I have no doubt everybody is working uh, every hour in the day to make sure that those small number of schools are dealt with as quickly as possible. Do you full confidence in Gillian Keegan despite her performance and her unguarded comments this week? Well, a lesson for everybody. Be careful when your mic is on. But uh, what it did show is that she actually she gave a damn. She was showing passion and frustration over this issue, and that's what you want to see. You want to see this sorted. Look, I'm a parent. My, my eldest daughter will start her first day at school tomorrow. I understand how important these issues are. I have no doubt this has been taken seriously. And if you contrast this to the disaster we had under the Building Schools for Future programme, which was wasteful, it was slow, and it left my constituents unable to get into local schools. What a transformation, all those new schools that I've seen in my constituency under this government. Just finally on Gillian Keegan, she said about there were people, in her view, and her colourful language, that were to blame. Uh, who do you think those people were? Well, I, I just... That, just, I mean, that will be debated, no doubt, in Parliament later on today. That's that's the uh, subject of today's debate. What parents want is they want to see action in those small number of schools, and I have no doubt that's been taken. Money will not be an issue in this area. It's made it clear that the money will be found. But this is building materials being used since the 1950s. Uh, and, uh, you know, here in England, we have been proactive in seeking to identify where works need to be done. We now need the devolved assemblies to step up and do the same. Mm. Justin, thank you. It's a very special moment when your kid goes to school. I hope you have a lovely uh, morning tomorrow morning, a uh, proud morning, well, presumably a sad morning as well for various reasons. But